Hi guys, welcome to Spatial Chat, another episode of how to use specs. Let's go! Uh, hi, Let's... hi, hi Debra, how are you today? Fabulous, fabulous, and I'm so glad that you're here in, um, in our musical timeline. Uh, Debra, to be honest, uh, I'm very excited to meet you as well because uh, we met each other in our demo event. You explained and showed your case study, how you've been using Spatial Chat. Uh, and as we spoke in the uh, backstage, uh, I'm curious to show other people how you've been using space and for what kind of needs you've been using. Yeah, so so um, so I'd love to share. This was a um, this is a musical timeline that was created by Pearl Pospiak, who's a partner of mine, and um, and um, and Micah upon. On Coco, and this is when you go close to the um, to the musical timeline, so you can see sources of inspiration or references. Um, obviously, you can hear them. Very cool. Yeah. So, so I absolutely love this, and we show this to the Idaho Black History Museum. So we're in the process now of creating a timeline for the Idaho Black History Museum where they're using a, a version of this to show the, um, the original information about their museum and then how it's progressed through time and where it is in a contemporary way. So they're looking at this, um, this template and mm -hmm. the top part is going to be historical information with all different kinds of things posted where people can pop in and view old, old art articles and different things. And then the bottom um, is going to be more contemporary pictures and they're interspersing it not just with music, but with oral testimonies. And so I think that that's just like, isn't that cool? It's a really, it it's a really exciting project. So that's launching for them in September. And um, wow. we're working on that now. So this is the inspiration for that. So I wanted to share that with you. Thank you very much. Quick question. How did you came up with the idea? Um, this was actually Pearl's idea. And um, she's one of the, one of the, most creative um, uh, designers, uh, you know, that's been working in this virtual space, and um, and this was her her inspiration visually. Wow. Wow. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's really it's it's really cool. It's it's very exciting. I mean, there's so much there's so much to this because as you can see, we could just like walk closer to any of these things, listen, talk about it. And there's all different kinds of pop-ups that can happen that can be informative. So it's both social, educational, and informational. That's what I really, really like about it. You can have a lot of people in here doing all different kinds of things as they want to around the music, you know, and or whatever else you're popping in here. It's, it's, it's a really cool model. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Deborah, to be honest, it's the first time I see somebody is using space in this kind of way, and the idea is excellent. Uh, oh, good. Let's, let's like pop over to Tony Bennett and Lady Gaga just for like, you know, a kickoff here. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Debra, uh, can I ask you one question? Because uh, yeah. we just straight away, we jumped to the case study. But may I ask you like a basic uh, question? Who you are, where you are, and what do you do for a living? Oh, yeah. We just like jump right in. Yeah. So I'm based in Los Angeles and I'm a serial entrepreneur and I got into physical events about 15 years ago and, um, and virtual events. Um, not on purpose, but at the beginning of the pandemic, and it was really just by doing a lot of conferences and different kinds of things. I didn't have any intention of, um, of doing virtual events, but the more that I got into it, the more I became really sensitive to what, to what I liked and what I didn't like. The friendships that I made, the experience I started to have, um, and then I met all different kinds of people. Pearl and I connected, and we started working on all sorts of experiences. And one of them actually started. Um, I mean, I 
got very involved with a with a creative group through Burning Man last summer, virtual Burning Man, mm, um, and wow. that and that and that honestly was my inspiration for helping and taking people and really honing in on the potential for what can happen beyond Zoom in, um, in the virtual space. And I am 100% committed now. I mean, things are opening up, things are going back, we're having a recurrence in the pandemic, but I'm definitely convinced that we are really at the beginning of hybrid experiences and honestly, like more really, really refined virtual experiences. And I do think that um, the social aspect to them and the freedom of this is just is key to going very far in depth and you know creating community around the world. And uh, I'm just I'm very excited by it. So this is you know I was there at the birth of it, and it's very you know I feel I feel very um, very very excited as i said as i keep saying but just fortunate too to you know to be able to help vision um what what i think is going to be wonderful for people i mean and obviously your tool is a, is a huge part of that excellent thank you very much uh, i love your energy i told you before but like you are sharing and telling things uh, it makes me smile and uh, yeah thank you very much for that <laughs> uh, okay You're welcome. Uh, uh, Derek, I will get back on the track with the case study. Mm, so I can see we have this uh, timeline and you will use it for a museum. Uh, yes, yes. So this is, yes. So there's lots of places to go with this, obviously. Lots of places, lots of people that we're talking to. And, you know, we are we are working with um, with other clients, other people that want to do this. So this is really like what we feel we have an expertise in, which is, you know, like not just how to help people do what they want to do in the virtual space, but to add that extra layer of what we think is stickiness, which is to create relationship and to um, make your online experience not a drain, but something that gives energy, not takes energy. Mm, excellent, excellent. Uh, Deborah, I will ask you one question. Uh, for example, uh, probably we will have some event agencies watching this video, okay? And then maybe you can share some idea how you've been selling spatial chat to your customers. So what, uh, what, what key, f what, what do you use uh, to say, hey, spatial chat is very cool, you should check it out, or uh, I don't know, how do you do it? Um, so really, really good question. So there was a, um, a, a FinTech, um, conference opportunity that um that that i was pitching for spatial so you know very straight business environment used to you know a lot of conventional things this was a tiny bit too much but i'm just convinced it's just early you know it's just really early days still for people um you know zoom just came out with like their first kind of immersive different um release this is after over a year so so i think it's it's just very very beginning but i had no um i had no doubt that it would have energized the content to have had that opportunity in this kind of space so i just you know i think that it's just <clears throat> i think that it's just a matter of um of time you know and just adoption so that's really what's going on um, mm. with that, yeah. I see, I see. Uh, okay. I mean, maybe, maybe a better, more specific um, answer is that, you know, for agencies that are looking to sell spatial, it's very easy to make spatial be an adjunct to more, um, more typical things, you know, so like pre-conference, post-conference, within a conference. So certainly it's like a fantastic plugin. As a whole environment and an exclusive environment, we're still early with adoption, for sure. Hmm, I see, I see. And uh, how, how, how does customers react when you're showing something new, for example, spatial chat? Are they open-minded or they closed and want to go to the old, old tools? 
Now, people, when they drop in for the first time, I always find that like they love it. They're like, wow, what is happening? This is so interesting. I mean, it's always actually really fun to see people just, you know, like pop in for the first time now and experience it. Yeah, people, people like it. And again, it's just like whatever you're doing with it next is kind of like what's the kicker. So if it's passive or if it's a basic, it's going to have that kind of energy. But if there's like a lot to do or more planned or a lot of engagement, or people or you're watching things or you know again it's just like how you're crafting the experience that just amps it up hmm i see i see okay 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 makes sense makes sense totally uh, but deborah how uh, how often do you organize events uh, how often do you organize events or how often do you visit space i mean i'm we're i'm probably doing things in spatial like three and four times a week so oh. It's like, yeah, I mean, I'm using it frequently um, and that's professionally. That's not just, you know, like personally, like to have, you know, little pop in meetings and things like that. Mm. Uh, OK. And then I'm just curious. I will ask you one question, additional question. For example, you need to explain spatial chat in one sentence. How would you describe it? I say it's an audio proximity platform, so it works just like real life. When you are close to people, you can hear them. When you go further away, you don't hear them. And you have control over how you move in the environment. Excellent, excellent. Thank you very much.